all that binding and loosening, the heaven and earth stuff. How can these things happen if God's anointed one, the Messiah, is to be tortured and executed? That's not what Peter had in mind, his suffering and death stuff. It's not the security, it's not the, the power, the, the influence, the glory that's expected of someone you give the name anointed one, Messiah, to. And he gets a rather strong reaction from Jesus, get behind me, Satan. If anyone wants to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Get behind me to be a follower, not in front of me, behind me, follow me. There's a story that tells of a young woman who wanted to go to college, a particular college, but her heart sank when she, she opened up the application to apply for the college and and one of the questions on the application was, are you a leader? Now, being both honest and conscientious, she wrote, no. And returned the application to the college, expecting the worst. To her surprise, she received a letter back from the admissions office saying, dear applicant, a study of the application forms revealed that this year, our college will have 1,452 new leaders. We are accepting you because we feel it is imperative that they have at least one follower. <laughs> Get behind me. Early in, in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus calls his first disciples, Peter and Andrew, saying, follow me and I'll make you fish for people, right? Jesus calls the brothers, um, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, and we read immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. As Jesus taught and healed folks all over the place, we read that great crowds followed him. To be a disciple of someone, in this case Jesus, is to be a student, a learner, a follower. Jesus, in no uncertain terms, reminds Peter and us that the role of disciple is not to be out from doing our own thing, directing things our way, but to be behind the one whom we follow, Jesus. To go the way we are led and taught, even when it means taking up our own cross when following Jesus. No glory. No prestige. No popularity. And it's not even always fun. To follow Jesus means to die to ourselves before we can live anew for God and others. We Lutherans have a fancy name called the Theology of the Cross that's so different from the world's all about me and my way, all about success and numbers and the fastest route to the top, which we call theology of glory, which is any kind of religious life that does not include dying to our own self. It's the theology of glory is any worship of Jesus without radical obedience to his call to love others. Theology of glory is what Martin Luther called the word without the cross. The teacher Bonhoeffer called cheap grace rather than costly grace. And Soren Kierkegaard described, described it as admiring Christ. Admiring Christ, not following Christ. Jesus knows this must be the way. The only way is to the cross. Peter, who has received the Christ blessing, is now putting his own thought, his own desires, his own understandings ahead of that of God. And in doing so, it becomes a, a hindrance, a stumbling block, in the way, something to trip over to Jesus' fulfillment of his vision. But notice something. 
Jesus does not toss him out or leave him behind or unfriend him on Facebook or never speak to him again. Jesus simply reminds Peter of where the proper place of a follower is, behind. In the temptation in the wilderness, Jesus said, Satan, be gone. But here, he said, get behind me. Do we suffer from the same thing? A failure to follow. How much we are set on human things rather than the things of God. We are set in our ways more often, concerned about our own comfort, our own convenience, than the needs of our brothers and our sisters in Christ. And it's easy to be torn, turned in order to, to put down that heavy cross and just hunker down for our own self-preservation sometimes. Or instead, choose the popularity parade. Fall in Christ instead requires faithful and courageous living it's costly. Yet, like Peter, we too are disciples that are not dismissed out of hand for getting things wrong, for our foolhardy misunderstanding and self-interest, but are called again and again to be behind Jesus. All that to be behind. Jesus in front, the one who leads, the one who has shown that in death, in death there is new life. The one called Emmanuel, God with us. Through him we receive this promise that he shall be with us always. Even, even when things are frightening or uncertain or sorrowful. Even when the personal cost is so high. How can our life together as the church, our, our living here in our communities, our response to all that is going on from these deadly storms to cries for justice and civil rights to the bombardment of political rhetoric nowadays, how can all of that be shaped? How can all of our responses be shaped? by staying behind the one who leads. What might we accomplish for the sake of the kingdom, for the mending of this torn apart country? If we trust in the promise of the one who goes ahead of us. I share as I have fairly often before my favorite closing prayer from morning prayer. Let us pray. O oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the end. By paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown, give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord.
your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of faithfulness, you bid your people to follow Jesus. Set the mind of your church on divine things. Grant us, in, grant us trust in you that we lose ourselves, our lives, for the sake of Christ, and thereby discover joy in him, in life through him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wonder, the earth is yours and all that is in, in it. Heal your creation and give us eyes to see the world as you do. As the seasons change, pattern the rhythm of our lives in harmony with all creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all the nations, Call us to live peaceably with all. Give us ears to hear one another, even though those we name as enemies. Fill all leaders with mercy and understanding that they advocate and genuinely care for those who are poor and most vulnerable in their communities. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of salvation, you promised to deliver us. Give those who suffer a strong sense of your presence and love. Accompany those who are uncertain, raise the spirits of those who are despairing, and to heal the sick, especially Jamie, Valerie, Brooke, Winnie, Sally, Chuck, Henry, Harry, Roy, Ruth, Pastor Storm, Bill, Karen, Ellen, and all those who have suffered from previous hurricanes and those uh, those from hurricanes uh, world. For those on our prayer list and all whom we remember aloud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of community, you call us to rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, and persevere in prayer. Make our congregation a workshop of your love. When we quarrel, bring reconciliation. Help us to overcome evil with good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of all grace, you give us everlasting love. In love we recall your holy ones, who now live in your undying light. In our remembering, give us a foretaste of the peace to come. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In the sure and certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Amen.
the way of everlasting life. And so of all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
body and blood of Christ, giving it to 